house of a rabbi uh, injuring uh, five uh, Jewish celebrants who were, who were there for Hanukkah. Fox correspondent Molly Line has more information on that attack. Yeah, you know, this was really scary. Uh, now federal hate crime charges have been leveled against this suspect. As you mentioned, a machete, a knife attack was happening at this Hanukkah party at a rabbi's house where congregants had gathered together to celebrate on the seventh night of Hanukkah. New documents revealing that anti-Semitic sentiments were also discovered in journals found at this man's home. 38-year-old Grafton Thomas of Greenwood Lake is accused of storming into the residence on Saturday as dozens of congregants Members of the Hasidic community gathered there. An FBI agent offers more detail, revealing in a complaint that Thomas wore a scarf concealing his face, declaring no one was leaving, before pulling out the machete and stabbing and slashing people. Five victims were hospitalized, including one in critical condition with a skull fracture. These new charges level five counts of obstruction related to the free exercise of religious beliefs involving an attempt to kill and use of a dangerous weapon. It's time that individuals understand that New York State is a state where anti-Semitism or any other type of hate will not be tolerated by anyone, period. And if in fact you engage in any form of hate which results in the injury of any individual, um, you will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law and your freedoms will be taken away. In handwritten journals recovered law enforcement, uh, no references were made to Adolf Hitler and Nazi culture. On the same page as drawings of the Star of David and a swastika, court documents also show the phone found in the suspect's car was used to search for nearby Jewish temples. Now, defense lawyers have requested that Thomas be allowed to continue taking medications for bipolar disorder and schizophrenia. Thomas's family claims that he is uh, mentally disturbed, not anti-Semitic. In speaking with him, uh, he was able to explain his behavior with reference to various auditory hallucinations and one might say demons. Um, and his explanations were not terribly coherent. He's always been a gentle giant with mental illness. Uh, regarding these federal hate crime charges for an attempt to kill, he could face life in prison or the death penalty if one of the victims dies in this case, Mark. Yeah, that's uh, interesting, these federal charges, because that suggests uh, that they don't entirely buy the mentally ill explanation for what he did. Mark. Well, they've got, been going through and they have quite a bit of evidence laid out in some of these documents regarding some of the photographs they have yeah. and the journals and, and uh, things that they've included here in this report. Yeah, that's, so. uh, that's, that's interesting. We'll keep watching that. Thank you. Uh, I'll tell you what's interesting. That you have a black man that attacked a bunch of Hasidic Jews in Muncie, New York with a machete known to have been involved in these types of things before and Nazi rhetorical signs and whatnots all in his home. Imagine if this guy was white and we had the idiot Cuomo at 8 o'clock in the morning of this incident. The next morning, this happened at night. The next morning, he's there at 8 o'clock in the morning with bells on, sucking up to the Hasidic community that pays him a king's ransom for their franchise. See, because they're not a religious organization. It's politics. They pay no property and school tax. The husband could be a brain surgeon. The state doesn't license their marriages so the wife can collect full welfare benefits. Could you imagine that? They have destroyed the surrounding communities of, of Curious Joel and Muncie. The tax bases have exploded. So between the crooked, corrupt cop unions, the teacher unions, and these Hasidim, property values have plummeted, taxes have skyrocketed, and 700 people a day are leaving New York. I'm not anti-Semitic. I got a lot of Jewish friends that I love. This is not anti-Jewish rhetoric. This is about what the Hasidim represent. Secular Jews, like regular people, Christians, and, and non-believers have to pay out the nose, and these people don't. And Muslim groups don't. One nation, indivisible? I think not. When you start letting people live lives 
outside the paradigm of what is legal for most people, you create winners and losers. And this is what the Democrats like Cuomo love. And by the way, he extorts a fortune from them, as did the Clintons. They love those Hasidic communities that have destroyed the public school systems in Ramapo and Spring Valley. Read about it. The corruption of the Providence Savings Baseball Park for the Rockland County Boulders. All they needed was was Fred Flintstone on the billboard. Is that funny? The Rockland County Boulders. So with all the corruption, they bought all the Goyam politicians, the supervisors of Clarkstown and Ramapo, they paid them all off to put up a ballpark that no one wanted. The taxpayers voted against it, but the Jewish investors in the Hasidic community made a fortune. So they wanted to rename the park from Providence Savings Park. When the bank pulled out because of the disgraziazza, I suggested they call it uh, Jurassic Park. Yeah, pun intended. Jurassic Park. Because you can't make this crap up. One nation under God, right? If you fit the box, you get to pay nothing. See, that's what America's become. Like most of our cities, liberal run for the takers, the non-productive people. New York City is skyrocketing in homeless people. All right? But all these liberal governments like New York and San Francisco and all these other disgusting libtard havens of secular humanism and sanctuary cities, and they're going belly up. And anybody with money is running for the hills. Get out of New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. Run from Massachusetts, or they're going to take your last shekel. Yeah because they're too stupid to see what damage they've done, like Cuomo. And by the way, someone attacks you with a knife or a machete or a bazooka, and we have to qualify it as a hate crime? Let's see, when's the last time any of you people out there in fake book land heard of an attack with a machete, gun, or other implement of destruction that wasn't a hate crime? What is it, a love crime? So I guess if I was a racist killer, as long as I yell, I love you, before I cut your head off, it's not a hate crime. Because according to Cuomo, I guess that's the logic. You see, America was built on what you do, not what you say. And that's out of the New Testament. When Jesus gave the parable to the children, who is the good son? It was the son that said, Father, I will not work this day, and went straight to the field and worked as opposed to the other comedian son who said, I'll go right now, Dad, and never went. And the children all answered Jesus properly. The son that said the wrong thing but did the right thing was the good son. And let me quote Ben Franklin, who learned from that. Better than well said is well done. So it is your deeds that speak for you, not your words. Words are nice, but deeds are nicer. Words are bad, but bad deeds are worse. But we've got a bunch of sophomoric, retarded politicians, okay, categorizing a hate crime by what the criminal or killer says and not what he does. These are dangerous times in dumbed-down America.